Hi everyone! Welcome again to Handy Dandy Husband. I have another food find video for you. This one was inspired by my friend Joy and her request for something South Asian. Today we are doing a review of the best veggie samosas in Vancouver with some quick tips on how to heat reheat them. Stay tuned! I have looked far and wide for the best quality and reasonably priced veggie samosas in Vancouver and nothing beats the Makmosas samosas in my opinion. While they are not the cheapest, they actually put more than just potatoes in their samosas and the consistency, flavor, crispiness and overall quality of their pastry is unbeatable and just simply incredible. Here is Makmosa's contact information. Here is a map of their location and a picture of their frontage. Now note, do not be betrayed by the more modest and industrial appearance of Makmosa's frontage. They make excellent food. Mr. Sahota, the owner, and his family started their business making muffins in the early to mid-1990s. And then they began making samosas. Makmosas does not do any marketing or advertising. All their business, and they are very busy, is by word of mouth alone. I suppose you could consider this one of their first public advertisements, but they have not endorsed this YouTube video, nor are they aware of it. Now, here is their menu. And, like I said, they don't spend too much money on marketing. Their focus is on quality product. Because they're so busy, sometimes they sell out. So it's best to call ahead and confirm they have what you want before you go to the store to pick it up. I purchased, in total, 25 mixed veggie samosas. I paid $19 for them. The samosas in size are triangular shaped and approximately three and a half inches by three and a half inches by about three inches. They're about oh one to one and a half inches thick. While Makmosa does recommend baking the samosas for about 10 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit I bake them for 20 minutes at 325 degrees and flip them at the 10 minute mark to maximize crispiness. So let's go show you that uh, baking process now. First we place the tray in the middle center area of the toaster oven and we put it on bake and make sure that it's preheated before we put the samosas inside the toaster oven. So now we're just waiting for it to preheat and the toaster oven will let me know once that temperature has been reached and we'll put them in at that time. The toaster oven has reached the predetermined 325 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. It's told me that it's preheated and I'm going to put the samosas inside for 10 minutes initially and then I'm going to turn them over and, and for another 10 minutes. Let's just adjust the timer right now. There we go and we'll let that heat up for 10 minutes and then we'll return. All right, now we're close to finishing off the 10 minutes on one side of cooking the samosas. And as you can tell, uh, the time is about 20 more seconds left for the first side. And with the samosas themselves, they've started to turn a nice golden brown and in certain places the oil is starting to uh, drip out okay and that completes the first 10 minutes after the 10 minutes are up we're just going to flip each of the samosas over all right these have all been flipped over i'm going to return them back into the toaster oven and turn it back on for another 10 minutes. 
Now, as I said before, this just makes them really crisp on both sides and gives them a very even crunch, and I really like that. You could, of course, just leave them in for 10 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's fair enough if you prefer to do a, a faster reheat of these frozen samosas. I'll return back once the 10 minutes are up. All right, now we're very close to the completion of the 20 minute cycle. And as you can tell, I did increase the temperature somewhat, uh, just because I had left the toaster oven open when I was trying to explain uh, the uh, heating of the samosas earlier. So I just wanted to play a little catch up on the heating of the samosas. Normally you would just leave them in, flip them quickly, and then um, heat them on the, the other side for t another 10 minutes. And as you can tell, they're golden brown. You can tell that the oil is bubbling, and that's a good sign. And they're complete. Now what I'm going to do is put down the camera and put them on this plate with some paper towels on it. And this is going to soak up some of the excess oil. So now I've uh, placed these samosas on a paper towel and flipped them over so that the paper towel absorbs as much of the excess oil as possible and now they're ready to serve and eat. Alright, here are the samosas after they've been heated. Look at the crispy golden brown pastry and if you can feel that, if you can hear that rather, it's very crispy. And because I did it on, because I heated them up on both sides, the crispiness translates to crispiness on both sides of the samosas. And I just want to make a comment, they smell mouth-watering. Wow, it's just incredible and I can smell some of the spices and the, the pastry and the oils. Let's uh, cut into it and look inside. Try this one here. Okay, let me just focus this here. As you can tell, there's some chili, there's some onions, there's some peas, there's some carrots, this is some corn, more onions, this is a potato. What else do they have in here? I guess that's about it. Peas, carrots, corn, onions, potatoes, and chilies and spices. Wow, an excellent blend of vegetables. Let's taste it. You can see the, the filling pops right out. Cuts really evenly. Mmm. It is spicy but not overpoweringly so. I can taste the corn, onions, potatoes. This one you can see the, the carrots a little better. Mmm. Mmm. This is simply delicious mm. now I normally have my samosas with uh, a little bit of ketchup a little bit of hot sauce but these are perfect without any additional sauces I'm just gonna try it with some hot sauce what I've done here is I first put in some ketchup and I put some Frank's hot sauce on top of it let's dip it in and see how it tastes Mmm. 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 Now normally, the ketchup and the hot sauce would improve the flavor. In this case, having eaten them plain, oh, it's so much better, just plain alone. 
it's a wonderful, wonderful combination of, uh, of spices, veggies, and potatoes. And if you just appreciate it alone, the pastry and the filling goes very, very well together. Mmm. It's got a really wonderful mellow taste initially, and it gets you, it gives you a kick at the end, all without any ketchup or hot sauce. And frankly, to be really honest, the ketchup seems to actually detract from the flavor as opposed to improving it. Mmm. This is simply delicious, highly, highly recommended. And once again, do not be put, a, put aside by the appearance of the front entrance. They make excellent product. They focus less on outward appearance and more about the actual product that they're creating. I hope you enjoyed this video on the best samosas in Vancouver. I thoroughly enjoyed these samosas and uh, actually off camera, I uh, had a few more they were so delicious and just like the first time I tried these samosas they are exquisite to eat and as I mentioned and this is absolutely truthful the addition of the ketchup and or hot sauce actually masks the true flavor of the samosa and therefore you don't get as much of the wonderful flavors of the um, filling coming out and the interplay between the potato and potatoes and the pastry the sort of like the smoother texture of the potato with the crispiness of the pastry you just don't get that when you mask it with the ketchup which makes it a little bit soggier now let me know um, if you agree why or why not uh, whether these samosas are the best in Vancouver if this review helped you leave a like and or so subscribe as always, thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more content from Handy Dandy Husband. <laughs>